This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. And good morning to you. The time right now is 427 here on our Monday morning. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Meredith Barrick. We want to welcome you in here. And we want to touch on some new guidelines that President Donald Trump talked about yesterday during his briefing. He is extending social distancing guidelines. Yeah, we're learning that he's now extending those guidelines through April 30th. So it's another about 30 days or so. Originally, he said he wanted those to be um, done by Easter. That was the hope anyway. And now he's saying, looking at the current situation, they are going to be pushing that till the end of April. So that's something to keep in mind, and that could impact businesses and people here in the Hoosier State as well. We know we have that stay-at-home order here that's a state-issued thing by Governor Holcomb right now. So we'll be keeping you updated as we learn more. They also, over the weekend, called Indianapolis a hotbed. That's what the president said, all as well as a few other cities. So something to keep in mind, how important that social distancing is here to flatten the curve and stop the spread here in the Hoosier State. Something else that had a lot of people talking this weekend was the stimulus checks that we should soon be receiving here over the next few weeks. Many people receiving roughly around $1,000 depending on how much money they make and how many dependents they have. Well, the FBI is now warning that there are scammers out there trying to take advantage of this situation. We have everything you need to know so that you don't get taken advantage job while you wait for your stimulus check to arrive. Yes, we'll show you what those look like and what you need to expect from the government so you don't lose your money. Now, we do want to talk about our forecast for today. Todd Clausen is standing by. Todd, wow, it was so windy over the weekend. <laughs> oh, Holy moly. Uh, you know, we went from all that rain on Friday and Saturday to those windy conditions yesterday, and it's still a little breezy out there. No doubt about that. Temperatures range from 50 in Bloomington to 41 in Logansport, so we are running a little bit below normal uh, temperature wise here for the next few days and that's the big take from the forecast we get a nice opportunity to dry out across the area uh, but it's still going to be breezy today a high temperature eventually climbs up to right around 54 degrees but with the wind it's going to feel a little bit cooler than that so my advice is if you want to take a walk through the neighborhood or do anything outdoors today even though it's going to get up to 54 you're still going to want to have at least a light jacket uh, with you if you're going to be out and about. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Now, we are also looking at how it's going for teachers and students out there. We know most of them are doing e-learning, some of them on spring break this week. So I talked to a teacher who works in the Archdiocese. She is a teacher at Our Lady of the Greenwood School down in Greenwood. She says that she's also a parent working to keep two boys occupied during this time. So she gives me an update on how their e-learning is going and her best tips for other teachers. That's coming up, plus news, weather, and traffic when we continue right here on Good Morning Indiana. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. As the number of COVID-19 cases continues to rise across the U.S., President Trump is extending social distancing guidelines. Why officials say Indianapolis could be one of the next hot spots. The pandemic is causing a Greenfield hospital to enact strict visitation restrictions. What they're doing to make sure patients can still connect with their loved ones. And with schools out, adjusting to e-learning can be a challenge for both teachers and students. We talked to one teacher and mom about what she's doing to manage her digital classroom. We want to welcome you in here on this Monday morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Meredith Barrick. And I'm Lauren Casey. It's great to be back with you guys this week. Todd Clausen is standing by with a look at today's forecast. And Todd, I think everyone just wants a nice day where we can step outside. Can you deliver on that? Yeah, you know, it's definitely going to be a day you can get out and about. It's going to be a little breezy. That's probably the biggest flaw in the forecast, but not as windy as it was yesterday. That is the good news. Those wind gusts yesterday, boy, uh, they were rattling my house. 50 degrees right now in Bloomington as you work your way to the north. A little bit cooler. 43 is the current temperature from Tipton over towards Peru. 46 is the current temperature in Richmond. So you need the jacket this morning and you'll need it kind of throughout the day because it does remain breezy. Uh, so any temperatures I tell you as far as highs go, it's going to actually feel a little bit cooler than that. You notice to the north there's a little more in the way a cloud cover will expand out and there's some scattered rain showers making their way uh, through Michigan a couple of these are going to try to drop down to the south so for locations like Peru
through over towards Gas City, Marion. It's not completely out of the question. And maybe that I have to throw in the chance of an isolated shower this afternoon, but most of us are going to be completely dry with plenty of sunshine in uh, the forecast. Temperature wise, 50 degrees uh, by the noon hour. Eventually, highs today climb up into the mid 50s. But again, with that breeze out there, Lauren, it's going to feel a little bit cooler than that. All right, Todd, thanks so much. We are keeping a close eye on traffic this morning. Pretty light right here at I 465 and I 69 Binford Boulevard on the northeast side. You can see traffic is moving along up to speed in all directions. Of course, we'll continue to keep you updated on any issues for your Monday morning commute throughout the morning. Nothing would be worse than declaring victory before the victory is won. That would be the greatest loss of all. President Trump announcing he is extending the social distancing guidelines for another month because of COVID-19. The country now has more than 135,000 cases and more than 2,400 people have died. The virus is surging across the country as states and hospitals become overrun with patients and continue to struggle with shortages. ABC's Inez de la Catera has the latest from Washington. After suggesting he could ease restrictions by Easter, President much. Trump announcing he is extending it's social distancing guidelines until April 30th. Nothing would be worse than declaring victory before the victory is won. This as the nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, warns the U.S. could get as many as 200,000 deaths and up to a million confirmed cases of COVID-19. What we're trying to do is not let that happen. New York City is leading the nation in the number of confirmed cases, now preparing to welcome U.S. Navy hospital ship Comfort today to make more room for patients. The Javits Convention Center is also getting set to open after being converted into a temporary field hospital. Convention centers in Washington State and Louisiana also being repurposed. And in California, the number of cases surging past 5,000. This, as many hospitals around the country still face mask and ventilator shortages. I have nurses that call me on a daily basis to tell me that they're scared, to tell me they don't know what to do. We didn't sign up for this. But President Trump seeming to blame the hospitals. 10 to 20,000 masks to 300,000, even though this is different. Something's going on. Where are the masks going? Meanwhile, financial relief for Americans is on the way. Within three weeks, we'll have direct deposit into people's accounts. Those checks could be as much as $1,200 per person plus 500 per child. The president predicts the country will be on its way to recovery by June. Inez de la Guterra, ABC News, Washington. Here at 434, the numbers of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Indiana has reached more than 1,500. 676 of those cases are in Marion County. Hamilton County has the third most in the state with 83. 32 deaths have been reported. Nearly 10,000 who have been tested for the virus. Taking a closer look at those numbers, the Indiana State Department of Health reports 56.7% of Hoosiers are 50 and above, 30.1% are between the age of 30 and 49, 52% of the positive cases are female, and 47% are male. U.S. Surgeon General Jerome Adams has named Indianapolis as an emerging hotspot for the coronavirus. In a series of tweets, Adams listed the Circle City along with New Orleans, Chicago, Detroit, L.A., and Miami. Adams also tweeted he often gets asked, when will this all be over? And his answer is, it depends. He says it's all about flattening the curve and raising the bar so local response capacity is not overwhelmed. That means increasing telehealth options and continuing social distancing and good hygiene to stop the spread. Because of that warning, Wayne Township School District is changing how it's distributing meals. Superintendent Jeffrey Butts sent the update saying they are adding safety measures during meal pickup. They are asking that drivers open their trunks before pulling up to the distribution center. That way employees can deliver the meals at a safe distance. They also do not want you to roll your window down. Instead, tell the employees how many meals you need with a show of fingers through the front windshield. The district is offering free meals to all all children 18 and under, 
You can find more about pickup times and locations on our website, theindychannel.com. Starting today, stricter visitation rules are in place at Hancock Regional Hospital out in Greenfield, but they're also taking steps to make sure that you can see your loved ones who are hospitalized. In-person visitations are no longer allowed, but the team has partnered with technology company Nine Star Connect to bring new e-visit program to the hospital. We have iPads that we have outfitted so that you can actually come to the hospital, drive up to the, to the portico in front, and we can hand you an iPad, and then you can park right there or in our parking lot and use the Wi-Fi that Nine Star Connect has so graciously put into our parking lot to connect and talk to your loved one face-to-face. Hancock County has had 13 confirmed cases and one death. The team says they have more than doubled their ICU capacity and nearly three times the ventilator capacity than before. The YMCA of Greater Indianapolis is expanding its child care services to parents who are considered essential workers during the coronavirus pandemic. Starting this week, their program for kids ages 5 to 12 will be added at Baxter, Hendricks Regional Health, Ursay Family, Jordan, and the Witham Family YMCA. It already has been been running at the Benjamin Harrison location. Leaders say during these uncertain times, the YMCA is honored to open its child care program to the heroes who keep our communities running smoothly. So we just want to um, kind of lessen the stress on them. We want to make sure that they feel that their kids are going to a safe place um, and a fun place to be able to spend their time during these tough times when I know there's a lot of stress throughout the community and at their work. Groups are limited to mo no more than 10 kids. Drop off and pickup will take place curbside and spaces are sanitized daily. Each child who attends must be fever and symptom free and can also receive support with e-learning assignments during the day. Parents, students and teachers across central Indiana continue to navigate through e-learning together and many are wondering if they'll even go back into a classroom this school year. We talked to one Greenwood mother and teacher at Our Lady of the Greenwood Catholic School. Elise Floyd tells us it's their first time Time doing e-learning. When the Archdiocese made the call, teachers worked quickly to change their lesson plans to a digital format for the fourth quarter. Students came to school for just a few hours when that went into effect to get their Chromebooks and packets for the younger kids. And now Floyd is helping students from her home while also keeping her two young boys occupied as her husband is a first responder. And she says it's important that students, parents, and educators work together during this trying time. We understand that this is stressful time for all of us, um, that it is definitely something that is not in all of our parents' wheelhouse. Uh, I, I understand the stress factor of being home with your kids more and trying to keep them on track when they want it to be like a snow day. And just that we are, we are here to answer any questions and to help alleviate any stress. Well, Floyd tells me that the end of the school year is still super important because next year they're going to build on what they learn right now. She's also researching best practices and web resources for her digital classroom. And she tells me PBS Learning Media and Edpuzzle are two of her favorite sites to use so far. Communities all across the state are working together to help keep first responders safe during the COVID-19 outbreak. In Lafayette, Subaru of Indiana donated several hundreds of supplies to local firefighters. The company donated 75 times suits and 320 packages of cleaning wipes to Lafayette Professional Firefighters Local 472. The fire department posted these photos on their Facebook thanking Subaru for their donation. They said the suits will help first responders keep safe from cross-contamination while responding to emergency medical calls. We want to hear more stories of Hoosiers working together during this tough time. Share the positive efforts going on in your community by emailing us at workingforyou at rtv6.com. Some familiar Colts faces teamed up on Twitter to encourage Hoosier, Hoosiers to stay safe and practice that social distancing. In a video posted on Governor Eric Holcomb's Twitter, former quarterback Andrew Luck and wide receiver T.Y. Hilton sent out this message to fans. Hoosiers, let's keep ourselves safe and stay smart here in Indiana. Please listen to Governor Holcomb, our state health department, and especially T.Y. Take care. You know, try your best to reach out to friends, family, you know, support them through this tough time. You know, even support your local restaurants with to-go orders. Be safe, remember to wash your hands, and go Colts. Love you, Colts Nation. 
Well, Indy 11 are also working to help during the pandemic. They are selling Team 11 Cares t-shirts online with the proceeds going to help healthcare workers with Community Health Network. Each t-shirt is $25. A shooting on Indy's east side leaves two people dead and another critically hurt. Coming up, what police are telling us about the homicide investigation. With the promise of a large stimulus check on its way to Americans, scammers are already trying to get your information. Still ahead, the latest scams the FBI wants you to watch out for. Todd. And it's been a windy stretch of weather over the past 24 hours, and that's continued now into our Monday. Some wind gusts still up near 30 miles per hour, if not above that in some locations. Good news is the winds will die down, and it's going to be a bright and sunny day for us. We'll talk all about it in your Storm Team 6 forecast. Time now is 441. Stay with us. We're back in just a few minutes. Days from 430 to 7. This morning, police are still trying to figure out what led up to a shooting that left two people dead and another fighting for his life on Indy's east side. IMPD officers were called to the 2500 block of North Emerson Avenue around 345 yesterday afternoon on reports of three people shot. All three were taken to the hospital, but two have since died from their injuries. The third is a juvenile who's in critical condition. Police did say a vehicle was found down the road from the scene, but they are trying to determine how it's connected. If you have any information Information, please call Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. A Navy medical ship has begun accepting patients to help hospitals with the coronavirus. The USNS Mercy is off the coast of Los Angeles and it's treating patients who do not have the disease. That way hospitals can focus on caring for those with COVID-19. The Navy Comfort Hospital ship is expected to arrive in New York City today to play a similar role. It's equipped with a dozen operating rooms and a thousand hospital beds. While America Americans wait for their stimulus checks to arrive. The FBI is warning people not to fall for scams. Government officials say scammers are already trying to steal people's money by asking for personal information through calls, texts, and websites. Officials also say scammers will likely try phishing scams by claiming to be from the government. Americans are eligible for up to $1,200 per person and should expect to see that money within three weeks. Recipients will receive a notice by mail with information about who to call if funds do not arrive. Delta and American Airlines are cutting even more flights as the coronavirus continues to cut into their business. American says it will reduce capacity in May by 70 to 80 percent. That's a larger cut than announced for April. Delta hasn't given specific numbers but says it will reduce flights to Europe, Asia, Canada, Mexico and the Caribbean. Southwest and United Airlines have also made similar adjustments. Residents are picking up the pieces after a tornado hit Jonesboro, Arkansas over the weekend. The National Weather Service confirms it was an EF3 tornado with 140 mile per hour winds. It tore through more than 12 miles of the city damaging businesses and tearing apart a shopping mall. 22 people were injured in the storm. One woman says after the tornado passed, people had to help each other dig out of destroyed homes. This community is amazing and God is good and we all hugged each other and we had been practicing social distancing, but we didn't do it last night. Tornadoes were also confirmed in other parts of the Midwest. An EF2 tornado damaged some homes in the southern Indiana city of Newburgh Saturday night. Parts of Illinois and Iowa were also hit. And Todd, I was just mentioning the mayor of Jonesboro saying this social distancing, somewhat a blessing in disguise because restaurants weren't packed, because stores weren't crowded with people. And he believes that may have saved some lives. Yeah, you know, absolutely. People weren't driving around through the storm and everybody was at home uh, hunkering down. So when those warnings came out and they had pretty good advanced warning uh, with that system, which was uh, tremendous news as well. And they could just uh, hunker down. Uh, we had one tornado warning on Saturday that was over in Jay County in the Portland area. No confirmed touchdown. So that's the good news. 47 degrees. Uh, that is the current temperature. The big issue yesterday and really kind of still today is going to be the wind. It's not as windy as it was yesterday when that wind advisory was in place, but still a little breezy out there uh, with those west winds at 24 miles per hour. The good news is they should should start to subside as the day goes on. Still some 50s in Bloomington as well as Bedford 42 and tipped in Greenfield at 45. Muncie sitting at 47 degrees uh, this morning and as we work our way throughout the course of the day today, we'll kind of toggle back and forth between uh, partly and mostly cloudy skies and temperatures will moderate. It's at the 50 degree range by the noon hour, about 53 degrees by 2 p.m. And then high temperatures today eventually get into the mid 50s with partly cloudy skies, although it will 
still feel a little bit cooler uh, than 55 and completely sunny with no wind compared to when we do have the breeze today. So you'll definitely want to have the jacket on if you're going to be out and about uh, taking that walk through uh, the neighborhood or for maybe for a run uh, later on uh, this afternoon. Storm Team 6 radar finally quiet. We're getting a good opportunity to dry out here over the course of the next few days. There are a lot of river flood warnings uh, that are out there. Those should start to subside uh, the river's crest and then those flood warnings will drop off as the week goes on. But there's some out there still currently. And so the north you do notice a little more in the way of cloud cover. Some spotty showers moving through Fort Wayne. Uh, these should essentially stay to our north. You may notice if you live in northern locations a little more in the way of cloud cover throughout the afternoon hours. And can't completely rule out the chance of a stray sprinkle or two. But it's only for those of you that live in northern locations. Indianapolis to the south should remain completely dry throughout uh, the day today with just those partly cloudy skies working their way in at times. So this evening, temperatures will be sitting in uh, the 40s for the most part. Sunset is at 808 with increasing clouds throughout the evening hours. And then for the day tomorrow, it's a much cooler day. In fact, tomorrow is well below normal. We're almost going to be running about 18 to 19 degrees below where we should be for this time of year in spots. It'll be dry though. That's the good news. But tomorrow is definitely a chilly day for us and one you're definitely going to have to bundle up as highs will only be in uh, the mid 40s back up to 53 on Wednesday back up to 60 on Thursday and when then we're in the 60s for Friday Saturday and Sunday but that's also when the weather pattern gets a little more unsettled here with some spotty showers into the weekend Meredith Todd thank you it's not just toilet paper and hand sanitizer that are hard to find in stores Americans are also panic buying pet food reports show sales of dog and cat food are up more than 50 percent compared to last year. Other pet supply sales are up 24%. Pet supply and delivery company Chewy says it's hiring 6,000 more workers to keep up with the demand. The wife of Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has finally recovered from the coronavirus. In an Instagram post, Sophie Trudeau says that she has a clear bill of health and she's super happy. She also thanked everyone for their well wishes. She tested positive March 12th after returning from a trip to the UK. Prime Minister Trudeau has remained in quarantine at his home. The organizations behind the Emmys and Golden Globes are changing their rules due to the coronavirus outbreak. Many TV productions are on hold, so the Television Academy is extending its Emmy eligibility date. It's also revising the voting calendar and suspending some events. Screening requirements for the Golden Globes are also being adjusted because many theaters are closed. The Hollywood Foreign Press is instead requesting applicants submit links or DVD copies of their films. For many family, vacations have been put on hold because of the coronavirus virus, but just after the break, how one dad brought their Disney destination right into their home. And more moms are looking into home births to try and avoid the hospital and the pandemic. New at 5, what one midwife is saying about the growing trend. It's 452. We'll be right back. All products ship from a U.S. warehouse. Welcome back. The time right now is 4.55. We're keeping a close eye on traffic this morning. Here's a look over on the west side, I-465 near the Sam Jones Expressway. Traffic is moving along up to speed, both northbound and southbound on your interstate. And our camera's bouncing around a little bit with the breeze out there this morning. Be safe if you have to head out on the roads. Trips to Disney World for many have been canceled due to the coronavirus, but that didn't stop one family for finding their own way to enjoy the happiest place on earth. Jesus Torres was excited to bring his 18-month-old daughter, Isla, to the park in Florida. When that didn't work, he decided to recreate the magic inside his own house. Her stuffed animals and toys stood in for the Disney characters as she rode through rides in a cardboard box. We've been staying at home, playing a lot of games, dancing, listening to music. I was like, I don't know what else to do. So randomly, I just came up with this idea to bring Disney to her. Isla played and clapped along through the ride. Jesus says he hopes he can still take her to the real Disney World very soon. We hope so, too. <laughs> she is very cute. All right, Todd, the good news is we got that wild weekend weather out of the way, and things are looking good for our week. Yeah, we had a lot of rainfall, and there are some river flood warnings that are out there, so be aware of that if you live in some flood-prone areas. But we do get a nice opportunity here now the next few days to dry out a little bit. It's going to be a little cool.
cool today and especially tomorrow with a high of 46 degrees and 53 on Wednesday, but back up into the 60s for the end of the week. Showers return on Friday, but it does not look like it's going to be any heavy rainfall, just a little unsettled as we head into the weekend. The time now, 4.57. Stay with us. We're back in just a few minutes.